Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you'd like some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. First up, I tried a new recipe for a crock pot cheesy chicken and rice. This recipe was given to me by a lady that I used to go to church with. She said she makes this all the time, so I wanted to give it a try. It was really easy to make. In this crock pot, I'm going to spray my liner with a little bit of cooking spray. I'm going to add in my chicken breasts, and I'll link the recipe in the description box below. Now, the recipe didn't say to season the chicken, but I added just a little bit of cavender seasoning. Then once I've got my chicken in my crock pot, I'm going to add in my chopped up onion, my can of cream of chicken soup, and then that's it. I'm going to put a lid on this, and I cooked this on low for about six or seven hours. You can also cook it on high. You just wanna make sure that your chicken is at least 165 degrees internal temperature. Once the chicken has cooked completely, you're going to make your rice. Now, I believe my friend said that she uses I think she said the Vigo yellow rice. The recipe suggested to use this Zatarin's yellow rice, so that's what I used. You're just going to cook your rice up according to the package instructions. Now back to the chicken. I'm going to take one of these little food choppers and chop up the chicken a little bit. It was so tender, it fell right apart. You could remove the chicken and chop it up or shard it if you'd like, but like I said, it, it just fell right apart with this. Now I'm going to add in that cooked rice. I'm going to give it a stir. Then I'm adding in my shredded sharp cheddar cheese, then my drained corn. I'm going to stir that until it's combined really well. And then I added just a little bit more cheese to the top and placed the lid back on the crock pot, turned it off and let it sit for just a couple minutes to allow that cheese to melt. Here's what it looked like when it was done. And to go along with this, I took a steam in a bag frozen broccoli, cooked it according to the package instructions, added just a tiny little bit of butter, salt, and pepper. Here are the finished plates. So we have some of the chicken and rice and the broccoli. This was good. Now, I can say there was something, I don't know what it was, but there was something in the seasoning of the Zatarin's rice that I wasn't completely crazy about. It wasn't bad by any means. I mean, it was still really yummy, but there was just some seasoning that I didn't quite prefer. So I'll make this again, definitely. But the next time I make this, I'll use one of the Vigo, or I can't remember the other name brand, but um, the other yellow rices uh, for that. But like I said, this was really easy to put together and it was really comforting. So I recommend you all give this recipe a try. I'll definitely make it again. The next night we had Pizza Hut. We don't eat Pizza Hut a whole lot, not for any particular reason. Well, I guess really because the Pizza Hut in our town, it does not deliver to our address for some weird reason. And so we would have to go pick it up. Um, so normally we just order what delivers to us. But I've been craving their breadsticks and I got a free coupon for breadsticks for my birthday. So I figured, hey, might as well use it. So we got some breadsticks and then for the pizza, I love, love, love their Meat Lovers pizza. It's so good and I haven't had it in years so I got a meat lovers pizza they had some kind of special to medium any way you want it so that's what we did and then my husband he got uh it had like pepperoni we made his own it had pepperoni peppers pineapple mushrooms and black olives on his and then he really wanted some chicken wings so I got some um buffalo wings for that so that was our dinner this night of course for just the two of us we had plenty of leftovers we had pizza for days <laughs> but that was all right we you know got our craving in so that was our dinner this night For dinner the next night, I made homemade sushi. If you're new to my channel or if you missed that video, I made sushi in a what's for dinner video a few months ago. It was the first time that I'd ever made it. And to be honest, I was really, really intimidated to give it a try. But my husband and I love sushi. My husband in particular, he could eat it pretty much every day and not get sick of it. But sushi eating out, it can be really expensive. So I wanted to try to make it at home just as a way that we could have it more often, much more budget friendly. Uh, but again, I was intimidated, but it was it was easy. Once I got the hang of it, now I did mess up on the first roll that I first made a couple months ago. But once I got the hang of it, it's not bad at all. It's pretty easy. So if you love sushi, I highly recommend you give this a try. So let me show you how I made it. We're first gonna start out with the sushi rice. 
Here's the rice that I'm using. I just got this at Walmart. It was only a couple dollars for the bag and I'll have the recipe that I use link in the description box below. So we're going to add the sushi rice to a colander and you want to rinse it with cold water until the water runs clear. Now to cook the rice, you can totally use a pot over the stove, but I really like to use my rice cooker. I've used a rice cooker uh, for years and years and years. So in high school, my high school boyfriend, he is Laotian and his family owned restaurants and my best friend in high school, she is Vietnamese. And so both of their families used rice cookers in their homes. And then, um, you know, his family would use rice cookers in their restaurant. And so I just got accustomed to using it. I love it. It's so easy. You just add your rice, water, any seasonings or add-ins you want to use, put it in the rice cooker, cover it with the lid and turn it on. And that's it. You don't have to babysit it, worry about it being scorched or anything. And every time I've made rice in my rice cooker, it's come out perfect every single time so you know if you're someone that makes rice a lot i would highly recommend you getting a rice cooker um they're not very expensive this one i got years and years ago but it was about mm, maybe less than 20 dollars. but they're still about that same price today so i'm going to add my rice and my water cover it with a lid turn it on and then that's it next i'm going to make like the seasoning for the rice in this measuring cup i'm adding in my rice vinegar salt and sugar and then i'm going to whisk that or stir that until the sugar has dissolved sometimes i pop this into the microwave for about 10 or 15 seconds just to dissolve the sugar and you can do this in a small bowl if you would prefer once the sugar is dissolved i'm going to drizzle that over the cooked sushi rice and then i'm going to stir that in with a wooden spoon and just make sure it's combined really well and then that's it the sushi rice will be done my favorite sushi roll is a shrimp tempura roll. So I have this tempura shrimp that I got at Trader Joe's. I'm going to cook a few pieces in my air fryer. Now I'm ready to make my sushi. So I have my bamboo mat here. I went ahead and prepped everything. So I've got some crab in parentheses, it's imitation crab that I just cut into sticks, some cucumber that I cut into sticks, some slices of avocado, and then some cream cheese that I just cut into little sticks as well. Next, I'm using this nori. I got it at Walmart. It was only a couple dollars for this whole package. And I had enough to make sushi rolls a couple months ago to make all the rolls tonight. And I still have several sheets left over. So I'm going to lay the piece of nori out on my bamboo mat. And then I like to take a little um, bowl and put some cold water in it. It really helps the rice not stick to my fingers as much. But I'm going to take some of the sushi rice and then using that bowl of water, I'm gonna dip my fingers in there and spread the rice out across the nori. And a quick disclaimer here, obviously if I said this is only the second time I've made sushi, I'm not a professional at all. I'm not a sushi chef. So I don't know all the technical terms and everything for this, but I'm doing, I think they call it an inside out roll, could be wrong. So I just took the piece of nori and flipped it over carefully. Now on the inside of the nori, add whatever you like. There really are no rules here. It's your kitchen, add what you like. So for this first roll, I'm going to make my husband kind of like a Philadelphia roll, but not exactly. So I'm adding some of the crab, cucumber, avocado, and cream cheese, and then I'm going to um, roll this up. Now, rolling it up, if you've ever made cinnamon rolls or like pinwheels or anything like that before, you can totally do this. Basically, just do the exact same thing. Using your bamboo mat, just roll it up and roll it tightly, again, like you would a cinnamon roll, and that's it. Here's what it looks like, so I'm going to set this to the side and then get started on the next roll. Next, I'm going to make a California roll. So I've laid out my nori, added my sushi rice. I'm going to add some sesame seeds to the rice. And then I press that in with my fingertips, flipped it over. And for this filling, I'm adding some of the quote unquote crab, cucumber stick, avocado, and then I'm going to roll that up. And that's the California roll. Now for my shrimp tempura or crunchy shrimp roll, I decided to add some of these french fried onions to the outside of the rice, just like I did the sesame seeds. You can also do some panko breadcrumbs. Next, I'm going to add in the tempura shrimp. Now, most of the restaurants that we eat sushi at, they leave the tails on, but I always pick them off. So I just went ahead and picked it off because why? I'm in my kitchen. So if I don't want to eat the shrimp tails, I can just peel them off. <laughs> but I'm going to add the shrimp. And then for my particular shrimp tempura roll, I'm going to add some of the avocado and cucumber cucumber and then roll that up and that's the shrimp tempura roll 
Here are the finished sushi rolls. So for this fourth roll, I didn't show it on camera, but it's the exact same way I did the other ones. I did another shrimp tempura roll, but for this one, instead of flipping the nori and the rice, so the rice was on the outside, I just left the nori on the outside. So I got this handy dandy little sushi um, like slicer. My mom and dad got us a sushi making kit. Well, actually they got it for my husband for his birthday. Um, they got it on Amazon. I'll have it linked in the description box below just in case you wanna check it out. But you don't have to use this of course you can just use it with a knife i like it because again i'm a novice so it just kind of helps me evenly space out the sushi but i'm just going to slice the sushi rolls up and then i use this little cheapy platter i think i got it at like the dollar store for a couple bucks i laid out our sushi rolls on the shrimp tempura roll i added some eel sauce i also get this on amazon you can get it at an asian market if you prefer but i'll link um Amazon. I'll link the Amazon link in my description box below as well. And then for my husband, the roll that had the cream cheese, I added some spicy mayonnaise. And then we have this little dish with some soy sauce. This dish came in that sushi set, by the way. And it also came with uh, chopstick holders and chopsticks. And it came with the bamboo mat. So it pretty much had everything that you need to make the sushi. And then we got the uh, pickled ginger. My husband loves that with his sushi. I got this at Walmart. And then we have some wasabi. I also got that at walmart so here's my finished plate this was so 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 delicious i i cannot wait to make the homemade sushi again it was so good For dinner the next night, I did not feel like cooking, so we did a yo-yo night. If you've never heard of yo-yo before, it's your on your own, which basically means everybody just fends for themselves. I believe this night my husband had some of the leftover pizza. I had two hot dogs in the refrigerator that I needed to use up, so I made some beanie weenies for myself. Um, I just whipped them together and simmered them for about 10 minutes. Super easy. I've shared this before on my channel. I'll link the recipe in the description box below. That was our dinner this night. For dinner the next night, I tried a new recipe for a crispy barbecue chicken wrap. I got this recipe from Taylor Elmore. She shared it in a what's for dinner video. I'll have it linked in the description box below. I'm sure you're familiar with her channel, but if you're not, make sure you check it out. I love, love, love her what's for dinner videos, really all of her videos, but she has really great content. And this recipe was delicious. My husband and I both really enjoyed it and we'll definitely make this again. Let me show you how I did it. To my bowl, I'm going to add in my cooked shredded chicken. This I already had prepped in my freezer. I just pulled it out and let it thaw. I've shared how I make this before my channel. I'll link that in the description box below. You could use leftover chicken or a rotisserie chicken. To that, I'm adding my shredded cheddar cheese. Really, you could use whatever cheese you have on hand or you and your family prefer. Next, I'm adding in my barbecue sauce. Then I'm going to add in the bacon. You could use uh, bacon that you cook up. I'm just using these bacon pieces that I get from Sam's Club. Then I'm going to add in the cilantro. If you're a cilantro hater, just leave it out. No worries. I have the recipe, by the way. I felt like it needed a little bit more barbecue sauce, so I added a little bit more, and I'm going to stir that until it's combined really well. Now I'm going to assemble the wraps. I'm using some of these medium flour tortillas. I'm just going to take a tortilla, lay it down, add some of the filling, and roll it up, and then set that to the side, and I'll continue to make my wraps. So to cook up the wraps, you can do this in a skillet or griddle. I have this like griddle pan. My husband got me some new pots and pans for Christmas and this was the first time I used it. I was really excited to give it a try and I love this. I can see myself using this all the time. But I heated it up on about medium heat, added a little bit of butter, and then I'm going to add the wraps and cook them for just a couple minutes on each side until they're nice and crispy and golden brown. Along with the wraps, I'm making a salad. So a couple weeks ago, my husband and I went to a pizza place to have lunch and I got their, I think they call it like a house salad and it was delicious. It was so, so good. I've been craving it and I realized I had everything on hand to make it. So I was like, hey, I'll just try to recreate it. So it was really easy and delicious. There's no real recipe for this, but what I'm doing is I'm adding some of this spring mix to my bowl. Next, I'm going to add some goat cheese. I don't know what kind of goat cheese the restaurant used, but I had some of this honey goat cheese that I got from Aldi. So I'm going to crumble that up. The restaurant had dried cranberries and some kind of candied nuts. I had a little bit of this package 
of um, almonds and craisins, but I also have a little bit of cranberries in this package and then these honey roasted pecan pieces. So I'm just going to add some of the uh, nuts and craisins. And then for the dressing, they have a like house made balsamic vinaigrette. I had some of this Ken's honey balsamic dressing. So I'm going to use that. Now for my particular liking, this balsamic vinaigrette was a little bit uh, too acidic. So I added just a tiny, tiny pinch of sugar to it and put um, it in this little mason jar and shook it up. So I'm going to drizzle that over the salad. Here's that finished salad, and then we have the crispy barbecue chicken wraps. Next, I'll show you our plates. Here are the plates. So we have some of the salad and the wraps. This was delicious, so, so good. I can't wait to make both of these recipes again. For dinner the next night, I tried another new recipe for Korean beef bowls. This recipe was actually sent to me by one of you. Her name is Christy. And if you have any recipes that you would like for me to try and show on my channel, please email them to me. My email address is listed in the description box below. Christy, thank you so much for sending this to me. This was delicious. My husband especially, he kept raving about it. And it was so, so easy. And y'all, this dinner, it takes like 15 minutes to put together. No lie. So I will link the recipe that Chrissy sent me in the description box below. Definitely give this a try if you like Asian food. It was so good. So in this skillet, I'm going to add in the oil. I'm going to turn the skillet on about medium heat. Then I'm going to add in the garlic and stir it constantly and cook the garlic for about a minute until it becomes fragrant. And the recipe didn't say to do this, but I had a couple green onions that were looking a little sad and I wanted to use them up. So I just chopped them up and I'm going to add those to the skillet. Next, I'm adding in the ground beef. I'm going to take a spoon and break that up and then cook this until the beef is cooked all the way through and is nice and brown. And then you'll want to drain it if you need to. If you use a leaner ground beef, you probably won't have to drain it. But I'm just using the paper towel trick. I'm going to carefully um, kind of lean the skillet and using a paper towel soak up that fat and then I'll throw the paper towel away. Next, I'm going to add in the sauce. So in this measuring cup, I have brown sugar, soy sauce, sesame oil, red pepper flakes, and ground ginger. I'm going to whisk that until it's combined really well. Add it to my skillet, stir it, and then I'll simmer this for just a couple minutes, just two or three minutes. That's all it takes. Here is the finished ground beef mixture. And for the rice, before I started cooking the ground beef, I added some rice, water, and salt to my rice cooker and just cook that until it's done. You could also use frozen or microwavable rice for this. That would even make this a quicker dinner. Now, I thought that my husband would probably like kimchi to go along with this. And there is a gas station in our town that a Korean family owns. And they sell like not only burgers and hot dogs, your typical gas station fare, but the lady there, she also makes Korean food and she makes kimchi from scratch and my husband loves it. So I stopped by this day and picked up a little thing of kimchi for my husband. Here's a picture of our finished plates. We have some of the rice, the ground beef mixture, and then I garnished it with some chopped green onions and sesame seeds. And then my husband has the kimchi. And like I said, this was delicious. It was so, so good. I can't wait to make this again. Again. For the last dinner in this week's video, I made crock pot lasagna. Now I need to explain a little bit about this real quick. So a couple months ago, I asked if anyone had any suggestions for videos that they wanted to see from me. And I had several people request um, me to make things that intimidate me. And crock pot lasagna immediately came to my mind. So years ago, I think my husband and I had only been married for about three years or so, and we've been married for 12 years now. So this was a while ago, but I was working full time outside the home and I had about an hour commute each way. We had people coming over for dinner and I was trying to figure something out that I can make for dinner that I didn't really have to do anything when I got home from work, that it would be done. And so I, you know, went online, started looking up crock pot recipes and I kept seeing recipes for crock pot lasagna. And so I made that. Um, you know, made it in the morning before work, came home from work uh, and served it up. The people came over from dinner and I served it up and took a couple bites. And I was like, oh my gosh, I was so mortified. It was awful. The lasagna, it was like really dry and hard. The lasagna was burnt. I mean, it was just nasty. It was so bad. And I said to the people that were over for dinner, I was like, y'all, I'm so sorry. I know this is bad. You know, we can run up to Sonic or McDonald's. And they were trying to be nice. And we're like, no, it's okay. And I was like, no. And I told my husband, I was like, Gary, go to Sonic, please get, a, get us some food. I mean, it was just 
horrible. But it's been a running joke between my husband and I ever since then. Um, you know, my husband gives me a hard time over it. And he's like, you know, I'll know when you're mad at me if you make me crock pot lasagna. Or, you know, he just gives me a hard time about it. So like I said, when you all said something that intimidates me, I was like, crock pot lasagna. So I started on Pinterest looking at recipes. I saw one from the plain chicken and I've made so many of her recipes over the years and they've never failed me. They've always been delicious. So I was like, surely she will not leave me wrong. So I decided to give it a try. So glad that I did. Y'all, it was good. It was delicious. And I figured out what I did wrong. I'll share that with you in a minute, but I figured out what I did wrong all those years ago. But let me show you how I made this. I'll link the recipe in the description box below. I have the recipe and we had plenty of leftovers. The recipe calls for Italian sausage. I'm using some ground turkey. I just cooked this up earlier in the day. To that, I'm adding in my spaghetti sauce. Just use your favorite. You could also use homemade. I took a little bit of water, added it to the jar and shook it up and then added that. I'm going to stir it and then set that to the side. In a separate bowl, I'm going to add in the cottage cheese, a beaten egg, and dried parsley flakes, and I'm going to stir that until it's combined really well. Now, I know I've mentioned this before on my channel, but I am not a cottage cheese lover, but I will eat it in like lasagna and things like that where it's baked because I can't really taste the texture in it. I also added a little bit of salt and pepper to this cottage cheese mixture. So again, once it's well combined, I'm going to set that to the side as well. Now I'm ready to assemble the lasagna. So I'm going to spray my crock pot liner with some cooking spray. Here are the lasagna noodles that I'm using. I just broke them up to fit the crock pot. I'm going to add some of the sauce to the bottom of the crock pot. Then I'm going to take a couple of the broken lasagna noodles, add those, add about a third of the cottage cheese mixture. Then I'm adding some slices of mozzarella cheese. Then more sauce then some grated Parmesan cheese. And then I'm just going to continue those layers. So noodles, the cottage cheese, mozzarella cheese, sauce, Parmesan cheese. And then you're going to top the lasagna with the remaining mozzarella slices. You're going to cover this with a lid and cook this on low for about four hours. And that's what I did, y'all. I way overcooked my lasagna before. Like I said, I had an hour commute each way to work and then I worked a full like eight 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 and a half hour day so I had way over the cooked the lasagna years ago so cooked it for four hours this time and like I said it was perfect now to go along with the lasagna I did some um, just french bread that I got I think I got this at Target and to dip the bread in I'm going to use some olive oil balsamic vinegar and some of these little like bread dip seasonings I guess here is a picture of my plate so I have some of the bread the bread dip and then the lasagna and like I said this was delicious it was really good this is you know comfort food it was easy to put together this is definitely something that you could just pop in the crock pot cook it for a few hours and dinner will be ready that's it for this week's video thank you so much for watching if you liked this video please hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already i hope you have a great rest of the day thanks so much Bye bye